Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. If you're just joining us, what we do here is tuning and tips and tricks and hacks and myth busting and experiments. Like today, we are going to take half of the tension rods out of each side of the bass drum, every other one, so that we have half as many on each side to see what it does to the sound. Apparently it's a thing people do and we got curious. Regardless of the size of your bass drum, oftentimes we're looking for low end. It is the bass drum, bass means low, generally speaking. And anytime that there's something we can do to accentuate or boost that or modify it in a way, it's worth checking out. And that's what we're doing today with this whole removal of some of the tension rods because they put tension on the head, they're each a node, and we're really not sure what's gonna happen. Thanks again to Promark by Diderio for being our presenting sponsor. I'm doing forward Acorn 5As today, hitting kinda hard, feels really good and hitting the bass drum pretty hard too. Now, here is where I saw this first. I saw Jim Black's bass drum once, really great jazz drummer, avant-garde guy. Um, he had a very, very small, like maybe a 16, um, that also was not on a lift, which was uh, separately bananas. Uh, and it looked to me like half of the screws in the front were gone. I couldn't see the side, but they were definitely missing. And if you've ever seen sonar bass drums, sometimes they have kind of like big knobs on there, so it was very obvious that they were gone. And with a 16, I thought to myself, well, what happens when you go from a 10 lug snare to a six lug snare? You have less nodes of pressure, and that means that at a certain amount of force from each of the tension rods, you're distributing it over a broader area before it gets to the next one. So that should mean that at a certain degree of tension, the whole head is collectively under a little bit less tension. And that's a cool thing with six lug snare drums because you can get a really different sound out of them that you can't get with a 10 lug drum. And it stands to reason that it should be similar with the bass drum. I have owned or played some uh, lower priced bass drums that only had six lugs at a 20 or a 22 just because of the price point, having less hardware, that kind of thing. And they had a unique sound and I kind of dug it. It definitely was low <laughs> and rumbly and big. And so that's what we're curious about today um, with this drum, which is again, Ben's uh, Pearl Masters Custom Maple, and it has 10 lugs on each side. And so we're gonna take first the regular old tuning that we're doing today, which is full heads on both sides. We have a EQ4 UV1 on this side, and we have an EQ4 calf tone on the front, no porting. We put the um, sandbag back in there just to kind of calm the whole thing down because we wanna be able to focus on the resonance and ignore the overtones a little bit, just see what's actually happening to the pitch, which is what we found when we did the sandbag experiment a few weeks ago. So first, this is the drum just at what I felt like was a medium low tuning. It's very resonant, it sounds good. Um, we're gonna do some single hits and then play some grooves. Well, there you go. Big tone, big sound, it's low. It rings for kind of a long time, or at least the note is kind of long. Adjusting the tuning can change that. Adding muffling, of course, is gonna change that. But we want that there so that we can then remove half of the tension rods and see what happens. So at this point, I've taken them out, and what we still have is the remaining five on each side that I haven't adjusted at all. So they're at the tension that they were when we had all 10 of them in. We'll do singles again, and then we'll play a little bit.
Now this to me sounds almost like a synth effect or something like that. Um, clearly we've removed a whole bunch of tension from both of the heads. The pitches have changed, they've dropped. There's some growl in the heads. The actual heads themselves are moving a whole lot more, particularly the front one. Um, because it's receiving all of that air from over here. Interestingly, it also feels really good to bury the beater on this tuning, whereas the previous one, it felt a little buzzy, a little flappy, it wasn't my favorite, um, but I actually found myself wanting to do that at this tuning. It felt really good, it sounded really good. The low end where I'm sitting is slightly reduced um, because the shell basically isn't moving quite as much, which is a choice, that's an option and it works and it's gonna get you a really different presence of the kick in the kick mics and also in all of the rest of the mics. So that's another thing to take into account. Um, also, if you're gonna be doing this live, this might be more of a studio kind of experiment um, when you have isolation and good microphones and things like that. But there's a lot of options in it and if you find it to be a sound that you dig for live stuff, by all means, you can totally run with it. By the way, if you like what we're doing, if you've been watching, if you're curious about specific topics or things that you wanna learn specifically from us, the way that we can do that is by getting support on our Patreon account. We are trying to turn this into a really forward-thinking and much larger project than it's been so far, and we have a lot of side sort of trails that we wanna go down that we really could use support um, to allow that to happen because it takes an extraordinary amount of time to make these videos and it's, it is it is a lot of work and it's worth it for us to share this information and we wanna be able to keep doing it. So please, if you enjoy this, hop over to the Patreon, the link is below and contribute whatever you can. We really appreciate it and it's gonna allow us to keep doing what we're doing here and make even more weird, <laughs> interesting opportunities here for you to see what we're doing. Now just to reiterate, the tuning rods that remain on the drum have not had their tension adjusted at all. I just took half of them out, every other one around on each side. And what's cool about this situation is that I didn't tune anything, I didn't adjust anything. This is actually kind of a fast way to drastically change the sound of your bass drum. And you may notice that the previous example with all of the screws in actually kind of felt like it had more low end in terms of tone in it. And this one has some rumble in it, but is also punchier. So it's kind of a hip trade-off where one of them has a lot of one thing and the other one has a lot of a couple of other things with a little of the previous one missing. The best thing about this also is that I know a lot of people who will remove or detune a tension rod or two. We've lowered the whole sound of the drum or rather we've reduced the tension by a lot, but the remaining tension rods are still under a lot of tension. So you're not gonna get any rattling ones. They're not gonna work their way out. If that's the thing that you run into with your bass drum where you tune it so low that the rods back out, you can try this, you can take some of them out and then each one will be responsible for more tension and it, just gonna take that problem right out. For those of us that do the just above a wrinkle, the jaw tuning on our bass drums, this can also be a functional option because at those low tunings, you can run into uh, tension rods backing out and even falling out of the drum or maybe falling out in the case when you're traveling. It's definitely happened to me um, and lots of people that I know that play a very low tuned bass drum. Um, and an awful lot of larger kind of rock bass drums have 10 lugs, which is a lot of nodes of pressure if you're gonna be tuning that low. I would also encourage you to um, try one side or the other. We're just doing the complete drum today. Um, you can try one or the other at home. You know, your drum's gonna be different. Your whole adventure is gonna be different with this. Um, but we decided to go sort of all the way and see what the maximum effect was that we could achieve. I'm thinking this doesn't so much sound like a traditional bass drum anymore. It's kind of down in almost like a synthy realm or like something that's been affected like in post-production. So now I'm gonna add some tension to the five tension rods that remain on each side. I'm gonna just do a half a turn. I'm not gonna check the pitches or anything. Just bump them up and then we're gonna play. Curious. Now, incidentally, we're almost exactly back at the pitch range of the initial tuning, which I didn't do on purpose. I just did a half a turn the way the key felt was good, so I stopped there and then I did that for the rest of them. And this feels different than the first tuning. It sounds a little different, but not a lot different. But now we're dealing again with less nodes of pressure and 
a lot of low end is back again. So there's some wiggle room between where we were in example two and where we are here in example three of partial turns or maybe doing the two heads differently, that kind of thing. But the whole behavior of the drum changes. It's almost like a different drum in terms of the playing of it and the tuning of it and what comes out when we do that. And any time that I can turn a drum I already have into a new drum, that's a good thing because it's one less thing to buy and it's another way to maintain your affection for the gear that you have and figure out the things that it can do because each of these drums could do a whole lot more than just the one thing that we normally use it for. All right, if you've made it this far, here comes the back-to-back -back comparisons of all these sounds. So as you can see, we did a very little bit of adjusting to the drum, same heads, same beater, same basically lack of muffling, and we got some really dramatically different sounds, some of which will work for some rooms better, different recordings better, all that kind of thing. But ultimately, again, more tools for your toolbox, more options to use. So that about wraps it up. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell down below so that you hear about our new videos. We are still dropping them every Tuesday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much to Promark by Diderio for being our presenting sponsor and helping us out with sticks. And we would very much like to know uh, if you've ever done this because I haven't seen a lot of it, but I've seen it talked about on forums and I've only seen it live a couple of times. And it was Jim both times. So, you know, it's a curious thing, but I'm definitely gonna try it out and uh, let us know if it works for you.